Hello and welcome to my channel, How To With Paul Henderson. Today's episode is gonna be on my truck. It is the three year, 36,000 mile review. And I will be doing this on my 2019 Chevy Silverado All-Star Edition Double Cab with the V8 5.3 liter Ecotec 3 engine, disabled dynamic fuel management, eight-speed transmission, and a six and a half foot bed. Actually, as of the date of this filming, my truck is exactly three years, one month old, just under 37,000 miles. So now let's get on with the review. I had purchased this truck from Riverside Chevrolet on August 28th, 2019. I had just paid under $35,000 for it and included the $1,000 for the step bars that I added on at the time of the purchase. After sales tax, DMV charges, destination charges, and the $1,500 for the Skyforce technology app, it came to just under 43,000. And then eight months later, I had bought an 84 month 100,000 mile extended warranty, that was 3,200. So my truck is covered under the warranty until 8-8-2027 and 112,000 miles because when I bought the warranty package, I had 12,000 miles. So it's either 84 months or 112,000 miles, whichever comes first. Right now I'm averaging 12,000 miles a year, which is perfect. So I shouldn't have any problem staying within that warranty period. But anyway, $3,200 for 84 months, 100,000 miles really isn't that bad. And since there was a couple issues with these Silverados, I figured it was a really good idea to get that extended warranty. So what do I love about this truck? Everything. When I saw that front end at the dealership, I fell in love with it. When I took it for a test drive, looking out at the hood, I just think they did an awesome job in that hood. The 2018s looked like something that would be on a sports car. This looks like a truck hood. And I love how the front end just flows down the sides all the way down to the rear. Now the rear has a standard tailgate with halogen light bulbs in the rear. I have no problem with halogen. I like them. I don't know what the big deal is about having LED light bulbs everywhere, but that's what people were bitching about. So I think now a lot of the newer trucks all come with LEDs. The interior is jet black. The headliner and the six pillars, front, middle, and rear are all medium gray. The All-Star Edition comes with the leather wrapped steering wheel, the upgraded infotainment system that comes with the eight inch screen, upgraded front door panels, and I do have the bench seats. I think the seats are comfortable. I also have uh, custom made neoprene seat covers on there so it adds about a quarter inch extra material so it makes it even more comfortable but I had no problem driving it without the seat covers until I got them. And uh, they just did a beautiful job. I love the mirrors with the <clears throat> chrome cap on top. Those are 17 inch rims and I think they look awesome. So chances of them getting stolen are pretty slim because they're not custom. And uh, one thing I do have to mention real quick, this uh, theft deterrent cap, it's not just for theft deterrent, it will also keep water from getting into the capless fuel system if for some reason that first trap door doesn't close all the way. There was a guy on YouTube that lives in a really cold climate, it was like 20 degrees, he went to go get the car washed and I guess with the rain and everything, I guess his first trap door didn't close all the way. So water got past the first one, got trapped above the second one. That hole that is in the fill pipe where water should drain out must have froze over. So that fill pipe from above that second trap door all the way up to the first one filled up with water and froze solid. So once again, I'll open this door, this cap will keep water from getting past that first door into the second door. So that cap is actually worth it for 18 bucks. Anyway, now I'm gonna tell you what I hate about this truck. So what do I hate about this vehicle? There are two things, DFM and the auto start stop feature. DFM, dynamic fuel management. Previous generation Silverados had AFM, active fuel management, AFM is where if you have an eight-cylinder vehicle, it'll go down to four and back up to eight. DFM, that is on these trucks. Eight-cylinder vehicle, go down to four cylinders, six cylinders, two, one, three, seven. It all depends upon what the computer 
thinks that the vehicle needs. Well, I kind of wonder what happens when you're on one cylinder going down a steep hill, you give a gas to go in the passing gear, and then those seven other cylinders have to kick in. I personally think that's a lot of stress on all those components and on the engine. And I believe that is why the previous generation and this newer generation is having lifter failures. And I was one of the ones that have lifter failures at 5,000 miles. The second is the auto start stop feature. That is one of the stupidest things they came out with besides DFM. And uh, the auto start stop feature is where if you come to a stoplight or you stop on the freeway, your truck will stop and then you give a gas, it starts back up. Well, think of it this way. You start your car once to go to work on a normal vehicle, you get to work, you turn it off. So that's start it once, stop it once. Well, I have 10 lights on the way to work. So if I get every single red light, my car, my truck is gonna start and stop a total of 11 times by the time I get to work and turn it off, which would be 22 times in one day, I think, if I calculated it right. I think that's a lot of wear and tear on the starter and on the battery and on the engine. So right after I bought the truck, I went to autostopeliminator.com and ordered a bypass cable. That cable goes between the switch that you can turn off when you don't want to use it and the wiring harness and it retains the memory of whatever you press the switch at. So if you keep the switch off, it stays off. If you keep the switch on, it stays on. And you can still turn it off and turn it on manually if you want. But if you turn the switch off, it stays off. And maybe a year or so after I bought the truck, I had installed a Pulsar LT to disable the dynamic fuel management. But like I said, at 5,000 miles, I had to have the passenger side lifters replaced. Riverside Chevrolet did it under the warranty. They fixed it perfectly. I did send my oil into Blackstone Laboratories for oil analysis twice, and both times it came back perfect. And right now I have almost 37,000 miles and haven't had any issues yet. And I do say yet, <laughs> there's still time for that. There are two other things that are known to go out on these vehicles. First one is the battery. Second one was the infotainment screen. Both of mine were replaced within the first 12 months. And my truck is now three years, one month old, and I haven't had any issues with either of those. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you everything that I had installed on the vehicle, whether I installed it or I paid to have it installed, and those pictures are gonna pop up. So let me go ahead and uh, get that ready. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some pictures up on the screen of everything that I had bought and installed or paid to have installed on my truck. On my two year review video, the prices I gave you included shipping and uh, sales tax. This time I'm gonna tell you what it costs without the sales tax and the shipping. Some of the items I got for free, some I used a promo code, some of it I had rewards credit available because I have a Chevy app. So whenever I ordered anything from the Chevy app and had it sent to the dealership, I could use my reward points for that. So sometimes I got 25 bucks off, 50 bucks off. I think the most I ever got off was like 50 or maybe it was 45. I think I got $100 off on something, I can't remember. But anyway, so here we go. So starting with the front end, you have the blacked out bow tie that comes standard on the All-Star Edition. Here you can see that I have just under 37,000 miles. Actually, it's 36,935. Here we have the EGR bug and stone deflector. Cost about $100. I ordered it through the Chevy app and picked it up at Riverside Chevrolet. It's in matte black. Now here we have the headlamps. I didn't order the headlamps, but I ordered from WeatherTech the lamp guard kit. Comes with six, piece, six pieces, three for the left side, three for the right. One for the headlamp, driving light, and the turn signal. And I did install that myself and I made an installation video. Here we have the recovery hooks in red, about $135. I actually went down to the dealership and ordered it. And I did install those myself. I had to cut a hole in the fascia to be able to install it. And I also made a video on that too. If you check it, if you search my YouTube channel, you'll be able to find that. Now we have the fog lamp kit, <laughs> fog lamp kit, which also comes 
with a new wiring harness and a switch that replaces the light switch inside the vehicle. That was about $245 and I did have Riverside Chevrolet install that. And down below we have the front license plate frame. It is uh, from WeatherTech. It will keep moisture and dust from getting into the license plate. They were about $35 for the front and the rear. Here we have the Chevy Performance Cold Air Intake System. It was $480. I did install that myself. And I did do an installation video for that. It also comes with the free programming to have the computer, the ECM reprogrammed for the new air intake system. And then here we have the Stillen Cold Air Intake Scoop, about 200 bucks. I did install that myself and I did an installation video on that. Here we have the JLT 3.0 black oil separator. $150, it is illegal for California, so don't ask me how I got it. Actually, I'll tell you, I had it shipped to a friend in Utah, then he shipped it to me. And here we have the Pulsar LT. This is a DFM eliminator, it actually turns so that's not a limit later, a DFM disabler where it turns off the DFM. So now my truck is a full size V8, 465 bucks. I ordered that from Holly Performance. And that came, I believe it was, it's California approved, so it's legal for California. You just, wait, I take that back. I think I have to take that off when I take it in to have it smogged, which will eventually be at, I think, four or five years for this truck. Now underneath the vehicle, I have a pair of filter mag magnets from filtermag.com. This part number is SS300PR, $135. So of course with the filter, the larger particles will get trapped in the filter media. The smaller ones is what causes the damage and that will get stuck to the sides of the filter because of these magnets are wrapped around the filter. And then to Drain your oil clicker, uh, quicker. I have the Fumoto Quick Release Oil Drain Valve from FumotoUSA.com. It's about 40 bucks. And I did a, do an installation video on that. And then underneath the truck, towards the rear, I have the MagnaFlow muffler, 145 bucks. This muffler is the same exact length as the stock muffler, but it has more of a flow through airflow design and it, it gives the engine a nice sound. It's not too loud, but just loud enough. Now I have the windshield tint. I have all six windows done. I have ultralight on the wind, front windshield with a uh, limo tint on top. The sides, the front sides are medium. The rear sides is one shade lighter along with the rear window, because I didn't want the rear three windows to be too dark. And then from the heatshieldstore.com, I had ordered six heat shields. I have one for the front and they all average $35 each. So you got the front one, you have the front side windows, and then here's a view from inside. They're black on the inside, gold on the outside. And I did a install video on those. And I also did a, uh, I also measured the temperature difference and I believe it was 40, I can't remember, it was 25 or 40 degrees cooler inside with the window tint and the heat shields. And as you can see, there's the back one. If it's all one piece, it just uh, pops in real quick. Now here on the door seals from WeatherTech, it was about $100 for four of them. It also came with a uh, door pocket liners or handle liners. I didn't use those and some plastic for the sides. I didn't put those on either. So I just used for the door seals. And as you can see, they're totally transparent. You can't even see it on the, this is the front door seal. And here's the rear door seal. And that material is just like the headlamps where it is uh, self healing. And then I have the EGR side window wind deflectors. 110 bucks and I did do an installation video on that also Now with these you can keep your windows down like a inch during the winter time and rain will not get inside Or on hot days you can leave it down so air can still get in 
and circulate a little bit so it won't get so hot inside. And then of course, I have the thousand dollar step bars. Those were uh, ordered at the time that I bought the truck and they came in about a month later and Riverside Chevrolet installed those for me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start with the second set. So here we go. Had to go get a beer and close two of my umbrellas that are on the balcony because they were casting a shadow on the, the front end. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the second set of photos. So this first photo is the backside of the front splash guard. I bought a four piece set from Riverside Chevrolet. You get two front and two for the rear. Now these are double walled. So as you can see by the front, it's uh, not single walled like uh, some of the aftermarket ones. And these cost $65 for the front and $65 for the rear. Now the rear one, the rear didn't have a splash guard. It only had that black small rock guard behind that uh, splash guard. And as you see, the rear one's also double walled and it has a nice little Chevy logo on the back. And now we have the bed rails by Putco or Putco. I still do not know how that's, uh, <laughs> that's pronounced. They were $280. I had Riverside Chevrolet install those for me and I did have a rewards credit for that. They are $280. Now here we have that uh, GM, GM Chevrolet theft deterrent capless fuel locking cap that actually does no good because someone can just pull it off and uh, still siphon out your gas if they want to. But like I said, earlier on in the video, it's a theft deterrent cap, but it will also keep rainwater and um, water from when you wash it, getting into that capless fuel system and it will keep dust from getting in there also. So I'll say it again, I do recommend that. It's 18 bucks from Amazon. And I believe you can get it on eBay for 18 bucks. The dealership is like uh, 35 or 40. So on the back of the vehicle, we have the WeatherTech 24 inch bump step. They call it a bump step because you can bump against something and you can also use it as a step to get in the back of the truck. And it was $120 from WeatherTech.com. I did do an installation video on that. Here we have the rear WeatherTech clear license plate frame, $35. It's the same as the front. This is the black one with the stainless steel insert that surrounds the, the frame. It has a gasket and everything, so it keeps uh, dust and water out. Now here we have the GM Chevrolet bed mat, six and a half feet. Now I did have to modify this one to fit in the back of my truck because my truck has a drop-in bed liner that comes standard with the All-Star Edition. A lot of the trucks now have a spray-in bed liner, so if you have a spray-in bed liner, you can order this bed mat and it will just drop right in the back of the bed. You don't have to do any uh, modifying to it, but if you have a drop-in bed liner, you're gonna have to modify it. And I did do a modification video for that. And this one was $150 and it does have the Chevy logo on the, the back end of it by the tailgate. So here we have my YouTube channel name, How To With Paul Henderson. It was done by a company called Moval Printing and Moreno Valley. I do believe he did it for free, I can't remember, but he did redo the YouTube logo. I had it originally done in red. I had him redo it in white and he made it three quarters of an inch bigger. I think it looks awesome. Here we have the neoprene seat covers from Car Cover USA, $260. They're custom made for your specific vehicle. It does come with one for the center console. I never sit anyone in this, uh, the center console seat. Even if I did, it's not gonna be very, for very long, so I wouldn't need the seat cover for that one. So I just tossed that one out. I think they look awesome and they're a perfect fit. Here we have Cup Hero cup and door pocket inserts. 21 pieces, they're about $40 from Amazon. 
I ordered the black with the gray piping. You can choose from all different colors, yellow, red, blue. I don't know what other colors there are, but I, I chose the gray one because I like it. And as you can see, here's the door pocket ones. There's uh, four for my front door pockets. You got the three for the bottom and one for behind all the switches. The rear ones have uh, just three all together, two for the bottom and one for the top. And here is the driver, driver side floor liners from GM. I actually ordered it from the Chevy app and had it sent to the Riverside Chevrolet. Shipping would have been about, I can't remember, 90 bucks I think. These cost $200 for the front and the rear. They are very thick and very heavy. There are two pieces for the front, two pieces for the rear. And here's the passenger side. So now if you spill something on the passenger side, you don't have to take out the entire front floor liner. You can just disconnect it from the center piece and pull out the passenger side or the driver's side. Other companies like WeatherTech and some other ones, they're one piece, but they are a lot thinner. These are really thick and I didn't do an installation video for this because my back was killing me when I bought these so I couldn't do it. Now here is the rear floor liner and it is one piece and it does go all the way underneath the rear seat. I have the front passenger seat all the way forward so that's why you can see the carpet. Otherwise you wouldn't see any of the carpet when the seat, when the passenger seat is in a normal position. Now I have two Garmin dash cams, number 56s, one in the front and one in the rear. They were, I think $245 each. For some reason, I didn't write it down, but I think that's what they cost. Here, I have the Pilot Titanium pedal covers. I bought those from Pet Boys. I don't think Pet Boys is around anymore. I think they only do automotive now. They don't have their uh, retail stores. I think Auto Parts took over the retail portion of Pet Boys. But these are titanium pedal covers. They're 20, about 25 bucks, I think. I can't remember how much I paid for those. Now here, I have this, it's from ProClip, USA.com or ProClip.com, I can't remember. It was about $30. It is their center mount, center dash mount with a Garmin ball mount. Now and I have a Garmin 65, which I believe the ball mount is an 18 millimeter. They have a Garmin 86, which is a 22 millimeter ball, so you have to make sure you order the right one. So this dash mount mounts right over the center infotainment screen system. So it looks really nice where it's at. I did move the Garmin mount over and up a little bit because where they want you to mount it, it's either on the left side or the right side. And the bottom of the Garmin was sitting just into the screen a little bit so I moved it over and drilled some new holes in the center of the Garmin. No, they already had the they already had holes in the center. I had to drill new holes in the center mount to be able to screw the Garmin mount where I wanted it to be. And then here is my Garmin GPS number 65. It's anywhere between 200 to 240 dollars. I think I just saw it on Best Buy for 200. Now in here you really can't see it. It is called the CDFG Tempered Glass Infotainment Screen Protector. It is a 9H hardness and it is glass. It's not plastic, it's bubble free. So when you put it on, the bubbles automatically dissipate or disappear. I don't know where they go, but it's bubble free. And I did do an installation video on that and that was about 12 bucks. And yes, I did go through two of them because I messed up the first one. So order a couple of them when you get them, that way you'll have a spare one. Now on this one, this is my XM system. My infotainment system did not come with, is not XM ready, so I had to buy a Sirius XM tuner along with the Vegas control module. And both of those together cost about $375. I did do an installation video on that. So now my truck 
has real XM radio. The antenna is on the roof. Now you can use an XM app from your phone to the infotainment system. However, that's only gonna work if you have signal getting to your phone. I go to a lot of places where you don't get cell phone service, so you always have a GPS signal hitting the top of the, the, top of the antenna, so you always have XM radio no matter where you go. Now here, below the climate control system, you have the, the button with the letter A, which is for auto start stop. I hate that feature, and I did buy a bypass cable from autostopeliminator.com. I had that installed at a stereo shop for about 80 bucks. But now that is obsolete because I have the Pulsar LT. So when you disable the dynamic fuel management, it automatically turns off the auto start stop feature that is on this truck. So even if I want to use the auto start stop, if I push that switch, it still stays off no matter what. But if you don't have the Pulsar LT and you want to permanently disable or be able to... Well, like I said earlier, if you have the auto stop eliminator cable installed and you push that switch to turn it off, it stays off until you turn it back on. So when you start your engine, it's automatically going to, automatically going to go to on the... Oh, what do you call that one screen? Dick. <laughs> DIC. Driver Information Center will display auto start off. Now, if you want to keep it on, go ahead and put, flip that switch on. It stays on. It works as normal. You tap the switch again. It'll stay off until you turn it back on. I think they should just remove that altogether. Now, here in the back seat, underneath... The rear seat, I have the under seat storage by Husky. It is called the Husky Gearbox, $150. And I did do an installation video on that. And as you can see here, it does hold quite a bit of stuff. I originally had the WeatherTech storage container. They're pretty much the same size. This one holds more than the WeatherTech. And plus the Husky one is mounted to the back of the floor using the toolkit, the tire toolkit that is, supply, that is supplied in the vehicle. The WeatherTech one uses a strap that goes around the seat post. You only get one strap and it still shifts two inches forward, two inches backwards. It's, I don't recommend the WeatherTech one. The Husky one fits perfect. And that is it for all the photos. So, I'm going to take a drink. Damn. So let me go ahead and I drink some more of this beer and then I'll be right back and uh, I'll do the closing spiel. Okay, so I'm back. So here we go. This is a wrap up and another how to video with Paul Henderson. This one was my three year 36,000 mile review on my 2019 Chevy Silverado. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, that really helps out my channel, and the bell icon, and you get notifications as new videos come out. If you wanna make a small donation to my channel, tap the super thanks button below this video. You can't do it if you're watching this on your TV, but you can do it on the computer, and on your laptop, and on your phone. Everything I get goes back into my truck, and I really do appreciate it. And uh, I guess that's it. And there are some bloopers, so there will be some of those. But first, I am going to show you a picture slide slow, <laughs> a picture slideshow of my truck. I did wax it. No, I washed it, clay barred it, and waxed it. I believe on 9:13. So that was maybe a little bit less than a month after I got out of the hospital. When I felt good enough, I thought I would do this. And uh, I really paid for it for the rest of the day after that. I was really sick, got a really bad headache. And uh, it was a really bad day that day. <laughs> but every other day I try to do something. 
because I need to see how far I can push myself. But anyway, here is that picture side slow. <laughs> here is that picture slideshow. So enjoy it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the picture slideshow. So enjoy the bloopers and enjoy your day. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good day and may your truck stay looking new for the rest of its life. <laughs> Have a good day, bye. Hello and welcome to my channel. How now, let me move that right there, bitch. Damn fucking mother fucking flies. Jesus Christ. I took a shower yesterday. Damn. It came to just under 43,000 miles and I don't know what's going on with these flies. Damn. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, damn it. <laughs> forgot the warranty package for just under $35,000, and then I included <laughs> test one, test two, test three. Let me line my feet up with the tape. Test one, test two, test three. Both times, the oil came back perfect, and gotta take my, uh, my medications for my stroke, damn it. Worst case, best case scenario, <laughs> and another fucking airplane, fuck you airplanes. They replaced both the battery and the infotainment screen. I believe it was in, was uh, blah, 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 blah. test one, test two, test three. And now that I have the Pulsar LT installed, this engine, uh, I don't like that either. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> well, hope you enjoyed the picture side slow. <laughs> well, I don't have a hard time saying that picture side show. No. Well, I hope you enjoyed the picture slideshow. <laughs> ah, damn it. Test one, test two, test three. Well, I hope you enjoyed the picture slide. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. See you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.